all have probably had times where clients, buyers, and or sellers are difficult. No. Everybody, I know, that never happens. But in the, in the unlikelihood it does. How have you guys dealt with that? Byron. And you can choose your own example on either side to maybe give a real world example where someone was difficult, however you define difficult. Well, besides the guy throwing the papers across the room. Which, yeah, I would well, almost say that's not that difficult. It's, but. it's difficult with some buyers and sellers to have them listen to your advice. They have paid you for that. That really is what they want, but they don't want to hear it sometimes if it's contrary to what they think Same, should happen. Yeah. So sometimes you have to be very careful about that and, and suggest we do different things, but sometimes it's good to give them alternatives to that. And if we, somebody was talking about the net sheet earlier. That's a good way to do that, too. If we do this, this is what you're going to get. If we do that, this is what you're going to get. And then they see that sometimes it's not as bad as they thought because a lot of times people get upset with closing costs or something. Mm -hmm. And you've told them this when you listed it, but they still don't like the idea that they're paying somebody else's closing costs and why. And if you can show them, the bottom line is what you need to look at. We don't care what you're paying. We're looking at what your net is going to be. Mm -hmm. Makes a difference. I think the more thorough you can be from the beginning, the less difficult they're going to be. Mm -hmm. And it's in you know, that takes time to learn exactly what you have to be thorough about and how much you have to remind them as you're going throughout the process of the <laughs> fact that this is what they need to expect. Um, they're going to be difficult. There's going to be some people who, regardless of how many times a week that you talk to them, of um, what the communication that you set up from the very beginning is going to look like, um, what the process is going to look like, you're going to just have them. So I think that's where customer service kicks in. You have to have your own level of what you can and can't tolerate, you know, where the professionalism lies. Um, but I've really learned that I have a lot less difficulty now than I did years ago only because I've learned to be so much more thorough. And really, I'm not afraid to set expectations anymore. You know, in the beginning, you want to accommodate and you want them to choose you and you know you're going to work really, really hard, but you're almost... Like my, eager. like what my Jake said to me, Pat and I were talking on the phone because I had a really difficult client the other day, which y'all don't even want to know about. And my 13-year-old sitting next to me, he goes, Mom, quit being so desperate. <laughs> and, and I looked at him and I was like, oh, <laughs> I wonder if that's what I'm being. Like here I am thinking I'm being super effective. And he's like, and I really thought about that after I got off the phone with awesome. them. I know. I mean, he put me in my place and I was like, Okay, you know, I was <laughs> I was being a little bit too accommodating, you know, and it's hard if you're a people pleaser. That's hard. You know, it sounds phony, but I think at the end we've all found ourselves in situations where, you know, where they're confident, right? And so there will be times where they are frustrated, where they will yell. But as as you guys have said, it's really not directed at us. It's directed at the situation that they're facing. And so the calmer we can be to not right. feed into the frenzy, right. oh yeah, I can't believe that, you know, that's not gonna you know, no. do any good to anybody. Um, that's, I think, where our professionalism kicks in. We, you know, where we are the ones who, like you said, we let them vent, but then when everybody calms down, we'll try to take control back of the situation so we can guide them through the process. Because at the end of the day, I think Francis said it best, we all have a joint goal, which is to you know collaborate on this and make make sure that this this transaction goes through. You know, so. real quick on that account too, the more direct you can be in negotiations, I have learned to be really direct with a smile, and I'll I, I feel she I'm, does that with me too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. If you're sitting there and you're kind of you know you're upbeat about it, but you're extremely direct and you're confident about it, even if you're not fake it till you make it. That's you know the case in so many parts of life. But if you sit there and you're really saying it and you're smiling while you're doing it I've had a lot of times where people are like okay I mean what do they say back to you you know it a lot it, of times if it, you're it must be okay yeah, you think yeah. It's okay. yeah it can be the worst thing ever but if you're saying it as positive as you can as direct as you can with facts or knowledge behind it it's really hard to come against that if you're yelling that's gonna be different if you're frustrated that's going to be different. And I mean, we all go there, believe me. I grit my teeth sometimes while I'm saying it, but <laughs> you know, that all will happen. But the more that you can tone that down and just be very upbeat, but very direct and firm and positive, that can make a huge impact in your negotiations. And you don't want to throw fuel on the fire. You do not. By, you know, saying the other agent's ridiculous or the buyer's ridiculous or whatever. But you might explain what they might be looking at and that might help.